continue, and then next week we will finish. Let us turn to our second scripture, which is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and snake, and the pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and the snake. And seven pairs of the birds of the air also male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For the seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old. And Noah, with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of the clean animals and the animals that are not clean, and the birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. Okay. So ends our second reading. Let us pray. Lord, we get ourselves into a lot of trouble. Some of it we bring upon ourselves, others it's just life. But as your children, do we always act like we should? Do we respond? in the right manner. A lot of times we forget that we are children. Children of salvation. Children of security. And we run in fear. Help us to learn from no one in the animals today. In Christ's name, no end. Amen. When disaster does occur, and we've seen this time and time again, either in real life, books, movies, it's chaos. Everyone is running to and fro, not knowing what to do, mostly thinking about their own safety and security. If they have to trample over someone else to get there, fine as long as they are safe. <coughs> Except that there will be your own immediate family, your spouse and your kids. Otherwise, we hope you get fun, but we're worried about our chance. Yet, in these books and novels, movies, but there always seems to be one person who defies that, who takes a stand to not only rescue others, but maybe even to stop the disaster itself. We as Christians should be that, kind of, that person who is going against the flow. But are we? The action which we normally see with most people and ourselves at times is <coughs> very instinctual. <coughs> Disaster comes, you flee from it. It's an instinct that animals even have. When a natural disaster comes, they will try to flee to high ground. Get away from the disaster. They don't care if there is a building in their way, they will plow through that building. And because they seem to lack the sense of discernment, we
We sometimes refer to these animals and pieces of God's creation as dumb animals. But how will we be different? We do the same thing. The only difference is we make machines and mechanisms to help us get to higher ground. They just won. But there was one time when the animals proved that they smarter than us. And that was what I discussed with the kids this morning. And read with you this morning. The ark. We talked about Noah a little uh, last week. Next week we'll talk about the rainbow. Today it's the animals. God was sending a flood to destroy all of life. At least the land animals and birds of all the humans. I guess that's why we eat fish during the month. To hold your hand. No. But the fish would be safe. But these animals <coughs> were wild. Yes, you had your few domesticated animals. But Noah had to not only build this boat, but to somehow get at least two of every kind, and in some cases, seven. Seven pairs onto this boat. Man, it wasn't just like that all the animals were living right there by. They came from the four corners. Because the whole world was going to be covered. Noah didn't send out his boys, okay, you go that way, you go north, you go south, you go east, I'll go west, we'll be back. No. They just worked on the air. God brought the animals. Going against every instinct. Yes, some animals seem to have this sense or more in tune with their environment than we are. When a national disaster is taking place, that we read now, understand through science, that like when a hurricane is in the ocean, and it's approaching where maybe the sharks are. No, you will not get your shark meat up. No, they will dive deep long before the hurricane gets there. They play it safe. Other animals know when an earthquake, feel the vibrations long before we do, and try to. So why would now these animals know maybe months, maybe even years want to go to a boat? It doesn't go against that you go to high ground. Noah's boat, as we discussed, was pretty tall. 45 feet. But I can tell you about Ararat where the boat finally landed was far bigger than 45 feet. So why would they go to a boat? Never seen one. And why would they go peacefully in pairs? Only one answer. God told them. He gave them that peace. Noah tried to do the same thing with the people around him. While he was building that ark, tell them about the flood. Tell them that God was going to cleanse the earth of all its evil ways. You're not going to listen. But God spoke to these animals and says, come. And they came. 
Noah and his sons and his wife, their his sons' wives, they said, Come. <coughs> they came, got into the boat, and left the rest to God. They didn't know exactly what to expect except a flood. But they had peace. Because they had heard God's voice and answered him. A lot of times, even when we hear God's voice, we act like a, maybe the third monkey. What's the third monkey? Well, we know two monkeys got out of the yard. What happened if the third would hurt it? I couldn't get it. I only want two. We were able to find out any ways that we could survive. We would scatter. We do. We, we still think we can do it wrong. Just like the people outside the yard, after the door was closed and the rains started coming, Mount, uh, the fountain started pushing forth from underground. <coughs> First, they were probably still rocking, you know, but as the waters kept rising, they started worrying, fretting. There's truth in what he's saying. Those animals knew what they would do. What can we do to save ourselves? Because we can't get out. Or no can't even open the door, you go start grabbing for anything that works. But it's too late. The door shut. God called. And he offered you security and a safe passage. But you chose to ignore. Him. And now you're Scrambling for your own life. If animals can be so smart as to hear and to answer peacefully and walk into that ark, why can't we, his very children, who have already heard and recognized his voice? He is our shepherd, and we know the voice of our shepherd. So when he calls, why do we still act like the masses, that third monkey, whatever, who is outside? Even the door, if the door may not be shut yet, we still may be little, or, or run frantic to and fro. It's because we may know who the Creator is. We may know His voice, but we have not chosen to abide with him. To be in his presence daily. To be intimate with him. We see him as the God who will hear our, our, our prayers, who will see our needs and will provide. Yes. But he is more than just a provider. He is our God. He is the <coughs> our friend and our savior. <coughs> and we need to listen and realize he has our best interests at heart. Yes, there will be times, as in Psalms 23, he says, we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But we know that God and I stand. They comfort me. That ark was the rod and the staff of those animals. They recognized us. They went in, they may not mentally comprehended what was going on. But they instinctually knew by the moving of God's voice in their lives, told them to go, they went. Why can't we, supposedly a higher intellectual being, do the same? We give we push aside our reason because rationally, logically, if your God is telling you there's disaster coming, only one way of saving yourself, 
It's this way. I will be with you. Wouldn't that be the smart thing to do? To do what he says? But no, we go, no, God, you got it wrong. It's not that bad. We got it under control. We've made provisions already. And then when disaster comes, oh, no, Lord, why did you forsake us? It's like the Christian joke about another type of flood in a small community. Um, water was maybe just six inches. They knew more water from coming in, and some police came out and said, get into our vehicle, and told us the family this, get into our vehicle, and we'll drive you away to safety. No, no, we've been praying to God, He is going to save us. Well, it got up past the first floor. They're on the second floor. And again, the troopers come out now on a boat. Get into our boat. We'll get you to safety. No, no, we've been praying and God will provide. Now they're on the roof. It's a guy sends a sorry, the troops sends in a helicopter. Climb on up. We'll get you out of here. No, but we pray God will provide. They die. The floods take their life. They're now standing outside the pearly gates. Peter meets them. What are you doing here? Well, we're wondering that too. We pray to God. Provide. Jesus steps over. I did. I provided you with the troopers. Boat and a helicopter. It didn't take my response. When God calls, let us be wise like the animals and peacefully enter. A lot of times, even when we do listen and we obey, our legs. Or jello. Okay, Laura, are you sure? Are you sure it's a safe bet? If God says it's safe ground, stand secure. If he says go forward, go forward. If he says go back, go back. But go. But we shake. Did the animals go? God loved us to die for us. He didn't die for the giraffe. He didn't die for the porcupine. He died for you and me. So let us give up that fear. Let us take courage in our Lord and Savior. And when he does call, no matter what the storm is, know that he is our lifeboat and that we are in far better place. Why? Because, like the disciples who were in another storm, in another boat, they were tormented because they too <laughs> were But yet, they had Jesus in their boat. Jesus is in your boat of life. Just listen to him and realize if he's in your presence and you are in his presence, there is nothing to fear. Fear does not reside in the heart and mind child of God. It is only love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, and a few others which I am forgetting. Amnesia is one of us. But fear does not belong. Go peacefully when God calls. Let us pray.